Here we go! Hello everyone, it's me, Savvy. Kirby is a series that I and many others enjoy, and that is for various reasons. Some of the simple to understand approach of the series, while others enjoy how much the developers celebrate the history of the franchise by constantly reminding you that they made this happen. Something that I think is overlooked though, is the long history of the series' artwork and the shift of art style during the lifespan of the series. So I've decided that today I won't talk about the excellent soundtracks, nor the good level design, not even the fan service. I'll instead focus on how the Kirby series has evolved from an artistic standpoint during the years. Let's go. Let's start from the very beginning. There once was a man named Gold Rogers. Let's start from the very beginning. There once was a man called Masahiro Sakurai. He was the responsible for the creation of the now famous franchise Twinkle Popo. What? You don't know Twinkle Popo? Here is him. That's right. That was the original name of Kirby's Dreamland. Our protagonist, Popopo, had to defeat the evil DDD, whose name would remain the same even after Kirby was given his final name. Kirby's original design was actually intended to be a simple placeholder, but as time passed, Sakurai grew attached to it and decided he wanted good old Popopo to stick around. It was a smart decision, as years later, Kirby is still one of the most recognizable character designs in gaming history. And it is so simple that anybody can draw him. Even I, a terrible artist, can draw a fairly decent Kirby. Even 1983's Kirby's Adventure for the NES had a cute intro where the game tells you how to draw Kirby. Imagine if his design was something like this. Even from Kirby's simple silhouette, you can recognize him, along with many different gaming heroes. What about the name? How did Popopo become Kirby? We don't know for sure. It could be because of the vacuum company Kirby. That would make sense, considering that Kirby inhales his enemies. Some others speculate that this is due to a strong connection between Nintendo and lawyer John Kirby, which shaped the company from being completely destroyed by Universal Studios over the similarities between DK and King Kong. Others point out to an interview with Shigeru Miyamoto, where he says that the name starts with a strong letter, K, a sound that is usually associated with strong and tough characters, and that was chosen as an ironic way of saying the player don't judge a book by its cover. Now let's analyze our boy here. A simple sphere, two red feet, and a cute simple face. Two puffy cheeks that are represented as two diagonal lives, and a jolly, pointy smile. Now other pieces of artwork depict Kirby in simple actions, such as sucking, blowing, and even falling down. His brain in the game is about the same as he looked in the artwork of the Japanese box art, where he had no cheeks at all. Moving on. Whilst Kirby's design in the 1993 game Kirby's Adventure will remain pretty much the exact same, the most interesting change will be the sprite, where Kirby actually has cheeks now. That's right, scratch this title, we're just gonna talk about cheeks now. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. The most interesting change was to the gameplay, as then when sucking certain enemies, you'll get a copy ability. So many promotional images had to represent Kirby with said new powers. And would you look at that, Kirby is more expressive than ever. As Kirby didn't have the copy ability hats yet, these artwork pieces had to show Kirby while he's doing the action itself. So these could be very creative. Let's take a look at some of these. In game, burning Kirby looks like he's ready to burn you, but in the artwork he's just like... What? Eyes wide open, an orange palette, and yeah, the cheeks are the same. I'll put a cheeks counter down here, just to be sure. Eyes in freezer blue, just like their game counterpart. And Tornado looks like he's doing a fancy dance move. Fro looks like he's doing a shoulder bash like Wario, and Hammer is sending you to Orange Jail. These were the only depictions of Kirby's copy abilities, though. In game, when you inhale an enemy, you'll get this cute little picture on the lower part of the screen. These are also very good. Ice is just hilarious, Fireball has the same energy from the artwork, Light is terrifying, Stone gives me PTSD, and Sleep is just cute. Also, Kirby with a realistic gun. With now a new generation of consoles and the usage of colors, Kirby's ready for a new era. Let's get this out of the way. Kirby's cheeks now look like this, and they've also changed color. 
Kirby Superstar Kirby is just a gradual evolution of the other Kirby designs from the past. We now have some shading and he doesn't do the Kerbo smile anymore. We also have a little bit of blue in his eyes. Kirby in-game looks much more detailed, and like Adventure, you can change color based on what ability you have. We are now entering a new era of gaming, so it's now possible to envision the characters just as they were intended. The poses this time are much more dynamic, and match almost one-to-one -to, -one to the original appearance. Palm, Ice, Mike, Parcel, and Suplex show some enemies that Kirby has just defeated, making them for a much better looking piece overall. Paint, Cutter, Fighter, and others play a lot around with movement, and they have this very thick and colorful lines that sharpen the entire composition. And I almost forgot to mention the most important thing of them all, the hats. Now having new copy abilities means that we also got new headgear for the Pink Puff. Some copy abilities like Fire, Ice, and Plasma have some sorts of tiara that has the element itself in it. The Wheelie Rider has to be my favorite, for its sheer amount of happiness and the composition is just overall very cute. Kirby holds the same amount of expressivity in the game. Crash, Mike, the Joey Fellow face, and even the returning icon displays are some of the most expressive faces the Puff has ever had. Even though the SNES had actually more Kirby games, the overall style remained the same. Kirby's Dream Run 3 had a stunning art style in-game. The entire game was presented as a crayon color book-like experience. It aged wonderfully, and all of its characters look even more cutesy. The ability combinations look adorable, and the end credits feature some cute drawings of the characters. About the artwork itself though, it doesn't feature the cute crayon style and resembles more superstars. Also, some of these are amazing. Surprisingly, the Japanese-only Kirby Superstar Stacker also had a Korean art style, and so we have an art piece of Kirby in an hand-drawn style, and damn it, the cheeks have changed again! And now we enter the new Cheeks era. That's right, I kid you not. This is Kirby's turning point. When the cheeks change, literally, the new era changes. It's not simple lines anymore. It's a slushy, pink oval. The first appearance may just be in the original Smash Bros. in 1999, but just in the game's version, because this game's artwork still had the early design. The first two appearances of the new Kirby was in the 2000s game Kirby 64 and the Crystal Shards. This is very important, as after this game the design would be the same and would practically never change again. But why? Why hasn't this changed yet? Simple. Kirby 64 had a cute gimmick called Copy Ability Combos. These would change Kirby stretching and changing his body to become many different things that could help our hero. Does that concept ring a bell to you? Going back to the NES era, it's important to remember how this simple intro showed us how you can draw the first thing we saw with just two jolly eyes, a cute smile, and two puffy chicks. This is the philosophy of Kirby. In the new Kirby game, at the time of writing this video, Kirby in the Forgotten Land, Kirby can suck anything he sees and can morph into different objects with the new Mouthful mode. And would you look at that, Kirby is still his usual self. Kirby could be a car, without limbs, on a burger, on a shirt, as an idol, as anything you want, Kirby will still be Kirby. And that may just be a very important lesson for us. Even though we may go through some tough changes, we also have to stick to your usual selves. As hard as it may be, Kirby shows us that change isn't necessarily bad, but sometimes we don't have to fix what's broken. Underselling yourself is the worst thing you can do. You are beautiful. Also, yeah, Kirby is pissing the American box arts because badass stuff sells. Also, also, Kirby's eyes now have stars in them. That's cool. Kirby has not had many changes over the years, but when he did, it changed his overall image forever and I managed to snuck a message in the end. This video is already very long, so I guess if this video gets enough attention, I'll make a sequel on other characters. Now, that was just one character, so imagine how long a Diddy video would be. If you enjoyed this, you know what to do. Share it with all Kirby fans and subscribe for more. With that being said, Savvy out.